Hello, and welcome to Perfect Pairings. My name is Gay Ann. I'm she, her. And my name is Nicole, she, her. And we are going to start today with an acknowledgement of country. So we acknowledge the traditional owners of the land on which we're recording, which is the Wurundjeri people of the Kulin Nation, and we would like to pay our respects to elders past and present. We'd also like to acknowledge the often fraught relationship between the farming industry and the land rights of the Indigenous people. Um, and then we also acknowledge the contribution of Indigenous people to um, fi the fibre arts that they have made um, over the millennia. Um, and we encourage and support the participation of Indigenous, um, indigenous people in the fibre arts community. So, perfect pairings. Perfect pairings. Um, as an Australian, you do need to put a little bit of an American accent on perfect pairings because with an Australian accent, it's just kind of per perfect, perfect pairings. Um, my partner has been struggling with it. He's saying perfect pairings. <laughs> it's not about cats. We do like cats, but this is not a cat. No, not no. a cat blog. <laughs> this, is, this is a knitting blog um, that Nicole and I have developed. Um, I've been watching many, um, many other knitting channels um, and just became engrossed in them. And I've noticed that we have some, there's a few in Australia, um, but I think mostly designers um, and none really that kind of encompass the entire fiber arts community. So we decided to start. Um, we will be talking a lot about the Australian fiber arts community and including some interviews and some little tours around places in our local area. Um, we're both from Melbourne in uh, Victoria, so down the down the southern part of Victoria where you do actually get to wear so a solid knits um, um, a in, lot of the year. <laughs> indeed, it is the second week of summer and I have worn um, turtleneck jumpers at least three times this week. So um, my winter knits are getting a workout this year. Ta-da! <laughs> Despite climate change. Um, a few things about us. We love, obviously love knitting. Um, we enjoy knitting the same projects. We do. We love to twin. That was one of the things that bonded us very early on. Mm -hmm. um, we also like to pair um, sorry, let me back up a step. Um, knitting is for me and I'm pretty sure for Nicole, a form of relaxation. So, um, we like to have these kind of mindful rituals. Um, and oftentimes those include, um, drinks, both of the, um, alcoholic and non-alcoholic variety. In fact, I actually work in the wine industry. Um, I work in a couple of industries, but I'm a trained sommelier and I teach wine through the Wine and Spirits Education Trust. Uh, so we will be incorporating in this vlog or podcast, we're not quite sure what we're calling it yet, um, some wine pairings, some drink pairings, tea pairings, um, just to add a little bit of a dimension. I, I feel like I'm very lucky to have access to um, <laughs> such knowledge um, about those things so I can make really informed decisions about my wine. So I just, generally if I know I'm going out, I will send Nicole a link to the wine list and she picks out something for me and it's always been really good. So I think you can trust um, Nicole's wine selections. Thank you. <laughs> um, now, why else do you enjoy knitting, Nicole, other than the mindfulness that we've kind of already... Yeah. We both have, um, we both have full-time jobs. We're both very busy mm -hmm. people. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. And I think both of our jobs, so other than wine, I work in healthcare. Um, it's very left brain. It's very intense and analytical. Yes. And, 
Um, so there's something really beautiful about engaging that right brain, that creative side, working with colour. Um, mm -hmm. There's a lot of talk around um, colour stimulating dopamine and improving mood. Oh, and, is that why I like it then so yeah, much? Yeah, maybe. Maybe. Oh, I didn't know that. And there's also something so beautiful when you're knitting about the, the texture and being able to um, engage with colour but use your hands and it, it engages so many... Uh, different senses there, um, mm. really helping you switch off from the world and, and really immersed in the project that you're working on. Mm. I really enjoy actually creating something with my hands as well, like knowing at the end I'll have a finished product that I can um, either wear myself and enjoy or give. Um, we'll talk, I think, a little bit later about gift knitting. Um, and there's something just so beautiful about that. Um, I suppose we can touch it was as well on slow fashion, that the um, impact of our knitting is also likely um, a reduction in, um, I suppose, purchasing sweaters that kind of come off a line that, um, that where are, often people aren't well treated. True. Um, there's actually a this week in social media I saw a photo of all of this fast fashion um, washed up on the shore of I can't remember which country it was but it was a third mm. world country that gets a lot of clothing donated um, but a lot of the clothing that's donated is not really that practical for the culture mm -hmm. um, so it does still end up as waste and it was all washed up on the shore of the beach um, mm creating a lot of danger for wildlife. Um, I know certainly since I've started knitting, I want to spend my, it's, it's made me appreciate more um, the value of something that's made. I am buying a lot less clothing. I'm spending a lot more of my money on yarn. Mm. Uh, but also when I am shopping, I'm making those really conscious decisions to support another local maker, uh, which is, um, a really lovely thing mm, and really I've, important. For I have found that as well. Supporting um, the community. Mm. Um, how did you start knitting? Well, my story is, it probably starts as a very young child. Um, my grandmother was very into fiber arts. Um, she particularly loved embroidery and did a lot of cross stitch and, and uh, I think it's called mm. black work, another type of embroidery stitch. Mm. And she was a member of the Embroiderers Guild in Brisbane. And when we stayed with my grandparents on holidays, there would always be a day where I would go along to the Embroiderers Guild with her. Mm. And when I was there, um, there was there were always lots of different people there um, working on different projects, not just um, stitch work. There was often crocheters or knitters or uh, people working on other projects. And I was just a really curious little kid and would walk around the room and talk to different people. And a lot of them would find me a little bit of yarn and a couple of plastic needles and show me how to knit or show me how to crochet or give me a little stitch work project that I could do for the day. So I grew up with absolutely no fear of tackling mm -hmm. any kind of craft project. Um, I never really got into knitting when I was younger. I think I probably, you know, whipped out a few scarves over the years, but never really explored anything beyond that. I think it has a, a bad reputation of being kind of a nana hobby. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. I think... Yeah, perhaps it does. Although I did crochet um, very seriously for a while, which is not necessarily that removed. No, um, but I feel like there's kind of, um, I don't know, when I think about crochet, I kind of feel like there's maybe some cooler. That's um, true. And the groomy crochet definitely has, has raised the, the certainly. profile. And I'm thinking of just crochet bags, um, kind of crochet halter tops that you That's might true. really be into. Um, kind of as a, a tween or a teen, like that might be a bit more fun than knitting a cardigan. That's true. Um, and then for me, uh, 
we live in Melbourne. Melbourne was the city um, that I think broke the record for the longest lockdown mm. overall during COVID. I'm pretty sure we did. So in uh, 2000, and I'm trying to remember which year of lockdown it was. So I'm just going to pause you there because not everyone, the people who may be watching from around the globe and not everyone will know exactly what lockdown was or what lockdown uh, meant for us. Um, it meant that we could only be outside of our homes for, I think at one point it was one hour a day for exercise. When we went outside, we had to be completely masked unless we were running, um, literally, mm -hmm. right? Um, and that went on for, oh, sorry. And then when you went out, you were only allowed to go five kilometers um, away from your home, which, um, was Medical, very confining. Yeah, a lot of family members couldn't visit each other. There were lots of creative stories where people realized that there was a car park that was in within the five kilometer radius of, of two different homes. And so people would meet there to swap food and wave at grandkids. And it was, it was quite a hardship, um, perhaps a necessary one um, to prevent um, preventable deaths. Um, from occurring due to COVID, um, but Australia and Victoria especially, I think took um, the pandemic very seriously. So, sorry, no. unpause, that's <laughs> your story. So in July of last year, 2021, um, there was a lot of creativity in Victoria because people suddenly had these, um, I guess, long time um, long periods of time for reflection and thoughts and creativity. Uh, so a couple of women in Melbourne started up a company called Cardigan. And the idea was they had started to learn to knit um, early in COVID and realized that it was a great skill and that there were ways that they could make it easier for other people to get engaged. So they put together these vibrant kits using chunky yarn, um, fairly simple, fun patterns um, that people could put together really quickly, have a finished product, uh, something that they felt really inspired about. So a good friend of mine made one of these kits and posted it on social media and I was completely besotted with it. I thought, I can give this a go. Um, and so this is my very first ever knitting project, which is a cardigan knit. I'm just going to hold that up there for a moment. So beautiful dopamine colors, um, really vibrant, happy design, uh, big squishy yarn. It didn't take long to knit at all. Um, this was a, a simple sort of, you made the sweater in pieces and then sort of stitched it together. Um, and it was the, this particular design was the Beck knit kit. So Beck, B-E-C, like Rebecca, uh, with, and you get to pick your own colors as well. I was well. just going to ask you, how does that work? <laughs> like, did it just come like that? No. Or? So you select the, the, the design that you like, and then there's this huge range of, uh, colors and you can just pick together, put together mm -hmm. the colors. So I just went wild. I went full dopamine. I needed some cheering up. So I've got keen as mustard. This color is peachy keen. Uh, this color is seafoam and ultraviolet. So mm. super fun knit. Um, if you're thinking about getting into knitting, Cardi Gangster Name, we'll pop the details in the show notes. And how many instructions? How did you find the um, super easy? Mm. Super easy. Very, very straightforward. Nice large print, lots of colors and diagrams. Great first project if you're ever wanting to get into knitting. And probably if you're here, you're either really into knitting or um, thinking very seriously about it. And pairings. Yes, what would you pair with that kind of a knit? Well, I think with something like this, it's once you get into it, it's pretty fun, pretty easy, nice and um, big yarn, uh, easy to work with. It would be very tactile. It is tactile, yeah. 
it's so squishy. I just, you can see me, I'm just massaging it as I talk. <laughs> you can see how thick that is. It's really, really chunky. chunky. Yeah. So I reckon once you, once you worked out the, the thought process behind this and, and got into it, you could go something quite boozy. Maybe a, yeah. a cocktail, like an old fashioned or, um, the yarn's really bulky and warm, so it's a great winter knit. Um, um, remind me, what's in an old fashioned? Ooh, I am not the cocktail expert. I think it's rum, isn't it? Rum or whiskey? I think it was bourbon. Don't know. Recipe on our next show <laughs> or in the Most description. We'll work that out. <laughs> it's a beautiful. I really cocktail. should have started with a wine, shouldn't I? <laughs> it's um, pair this. Yes. <laughs> With a big, rich Barossa Valley Shiraz, something nice and spicy. Yes. Also very boozy, often sort of 14.5%. Oh, yeah. But, um, oh, yeah. Or an old-fashioned. We'll look that up. I think, <laughs> yes. I feel like I can visualize it with a maraschino cherry. That, right? Yeah, yeah, that's it. So it's a straight-up drink, often with a, a large ice cube in it, I think, or sometimes without, um, but quite boozy. And then, yeah, a maraschino cherry. Just really smooth, gorgeous drink for a, a cold winter night. Mm. Mm. We just took a short break to determine what was in an old fashioned cocktail. And the embarrassing thing is that about 12 years ago, I worked in a bar and I used to actually make these. It was a, to be fair to me, it was a, a tiki bar and we had different names for everything. Nothing was called by their classic names, but um, I certainly do remember making these cocktails. So we have yeah. consulted um, the cocktail Bible of Melbourne, um, A Spot at the Bar, which is a book produced by the Everly um, Cocktail Bar. Fantastic cocktail bar. Um, it's actually really wonderful. My partner and I went there um, once and how they operate is the bartender will basically just ask you what flavors that you like um, or if you like a particular um, type of alcohol like gin or vodka tequila and then kind of make a cocktail based on that sounds fabulous oh it is fabulous and the book is fabulous and the old-fashioned contains drum roll um, bourbon Angostura bitters, a white sugar cube, um, soda. That's soda water, hey? Yep, just um, a, a tiny dash of soda. So it's one of those beautiful stirred drinks where you um, gradually sort of stir the, the white sugar and the bourbon together and yeah, beautiful um, simple. Garnished with an orange and lemon twist. Warming there you go. and refreshing. Um, if you don't have the other ingredients, you could always just have whiskey on the rocks. Equally warming. <laughs> so we should talk about your first project. My first project. Well, um, I think it was 2019. I was going through a period of time in my life where I was just super stressed out all the time. Um, like Nicole, I work in a very high pressure, left brain, analytical, um, problem solving type of industry. So I'm always dealing with problems, everybody else's problems, um, and trying to fix them. So that can be very stressful. Um, and I thought, let me just, let me just try knitting. Now my mom taught me how to knit ages and ages and ages ago. And I just, um, through the years never really got into it. Um, but then I took a class at my local yarn shop, which at the time was called Yarn & Co. They used to be on Smith Street oh. in Collingwood, um, where uh, my husband and I used to live. And um, I think it was a two hour class. They taught you just really basic uh, knitted cast on, um, or I think what's called a, I think they call it a cable cast on now as well. and. Um, the knit stitch and we learned how to bind off and they gave us um, I think it was two balls of Cascade Lana Grand and I made mine in navy um, 
and I think we probably got just a little bit of a way through the first ball and then they send you they send you on your way come back if um, come back if you know you have questions and then I just got hooked and like couldn't stop knitting and what was that first project it was, was it? a scarf oh. it was just a scarf sorry that was um, I should have said that at the beginning um, 18 stitches across two balls of wool cast off really make sure you have enough Great. yarn to cast off <laughs> yeah. right? no yarn chicken there so no, like a really simple pattern um I don't have it because I gift I gifted it to my dad um there's photographs of it on my Ravelry I'm on Ravelry as G dub knits um D-U-B it'll be in the show notes um so you can feel free to to check it out it was just really basic so if you want um if you are intimidated by Nicole's Cardi Gang and you need something, I know it does. <laughs> Some people might be like yeah, it's fair, multiple fair. colors, yep, like absolutely, fair. and just want something like really straight, straight beginner. Um, I can. All you do is just I think it was ten millimeter needles, which are huge. They're about that's you know it's like yeah, yeah honker, the, honking big. needles. <laughs> um. And it was just really basic. You could put a couple of rows on at night or, um, you know, if you're in the car waiting for the kids at the school pickup, like that's, um, you know, it's really, really basic. So I was hooked, I'll admit, after that. And Yarn & Co, sorry, I just want to also mention Yarn & Co because I used to love them in Smith Street. They were, I think, a little bit of a victim of the pandemic. Um, but they are, if you used to love Yarn & Co like I did, they are now online. Oh, I did so, like that. Yes, yes. Um, so you can look them up. Um, mm, yeah, yeah. So I think they do still sell Cascade. Um, yeah. Lovely vibrant store. And then what was your second knit? So I think I got a little too... Um, too confident. <laughs> I probably should have gone with the Cardi Gang. Um, but I went with this pattern from Erica Knight called the Simple Sweater. Um, and it was basic. It's a basic um, bottom up. Um, you know, do the front, do the back, do the sleeves. But it had fairly complicated um, shaping around the neck and the collar and I had quite a bit of difficulty with um, reading the pattern, probably because I was new at reading patterns and um, some patterns are just clearer than others. I think that's an objective fact, mm -hmm. um, but I was literally probably on FaceTime with my mother at least three times a week trying to decipher this pattern. <laughs> That's a nice bonding time <laughs> was, too, right? <laughs> it was very bonding. You can bond over knitting. Um, that was fantastic. It was a beautiful red. Um, and I actually sent that to my mom for <laughs> after I made it. I don't know why. I'm making these things and like, I look back at the first... Um, I don't know, a few months of my knitting and the majority of the things I made, I actually gave away. So I don't have them anymore. I think you have put a photo of that up on our Instagram already though. Yes. You? So it is yes. on our Instagram, which is at Perlfect Pairings, all one word. Yes, that's Perlfect Pairings. Yes, P-U-R-L, just in case the Australian accent is not perfect. Um, <laughs> So pairings for the simple scarf, I reckon you could, um, well, you're, if you're knitting that, you're probably really beginning. So maybe a cup of tea. <laughs> um, what about the Erica sweater? That sort of sounds like a tea project as well. I think maybe I, a spicy tea just to like yes. edge it up a bit. But. Yes. A lemongrass <laughs> and ginger maybe. Ooh. Um, that could, <laughs> that could work. I can read a pattern now, really. I yes, guess. you I can. can. <laughs> you can. And we're about to show you uh, some 
well, quite some progression from those early knitting stories, definitely. Nicole, tell me, do you have multiple works in progress or do you work on one thing at a time? They call that monogamous knitting. Again, has been a very bad influence <laughs> on me. I was a monogamous knitter. Oh. Until I met you. Mm. Uh, now I actually, I think I'm only at about six works in progress at the moment. Um, I'm only going to show you the one later uh, that I'm that I've touched recently, uh, because yes, there's there's a few in in my in in the the tower of plastic crates in my spare room. I know. We'll have to maybe do a a special episode on stash. <laughs> oh gosh. Mm. Yes. Um. I think I probably have a different project for every day of the week, at least. I am, I think you talked about um, the dopamine hit that you can get from um, working with colors. I think there's also, um, and perhaps I'll look up the psychology around this, um, there's gotta be a dopamine hit for starting a new project because I feel like, I don't know, every other week I'm starting something new and then just working on, I do a little bit of work on each of the projects throughout the week. Um, but then it, I don't get a lot of progress. So my finished object <laughs> don't have, it takes me longer to finish, obviously if I'm working on um, multiple projects. I do have to tell you this story. Gay Anne loves a new cast on so much. <laughs> that recently when she was casting on her advent shawl, which you can see in our micro episodes mm -hmm. on this channel, she realized that it required some crochet hooks for the cast on. And so she excitedly texted me and said, this might be a good excuse to buy this set of crochet hooks that I really like. <laughs> to which I replied, I have plenty of crochet hooks and um, it's only six stitches that you need to crochet. <laughs> I, <needed> to <laughs> I had to chain six stitches and um, confession, I have a smattering of crochet hooks already. And um, also I'm not that fond of crochet. I mean, I can do it, um, but I much prefer knitting. I'm not trying to alienate anybody who does like to crochet. Oh no. There's no crochet um, synonymous here. But, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think the accumulation of equipment um, <laughs> and yarn, and yarn mm. um, is probably also very enticing, um, enticing for me. Um, so I've got two whips that I would like oh. to share. Um, two of the, well, I haven't counted lately, so let's, let's not go there. Like um, double figures, I would say. <laughs> like, likely. <laughs> um, this is inspired from one of my, no, I'll say my favorite knitting um, vlogger, blogger, podcaster, whatever you want to call us. Um, her name is Amy Palco. She blogs under the name Amy Palco, so you can search her um, YouTube channel um, what's she, her channel? What's her? Uh, the Meaningful Stitch. Oh, yeah. Thank you for reminding me about that. It's, I'm so drawn to it because um, I find Amy very calming, her presence very calming um, and zen. Um, and I like how her podcasts have quite a bit of structure. Um, so hopefully you'll, we'll be able to emulate those, um, but with a different focus, obviously, on Australia because Amy is in Scotland and that's another thing that I love like she went to um, what was it Scotland no the Scottish wool producers week and like talked about and that the, and she goes to Perth the Perth Yarn Perth Festival, Festival. Um, something and her accent is just beautiful <laughs> dreamy it's a dreamy even if you just listen to the accent I'm sorry we definitely can't replicate I know that. I'm not even gonna try I won't try um, but Amy has made 
I think at least two, if not three, half and half triangle wraps, um, which is a free pattern from a American yarn company called Pearl Soho. Um, and I have cast on the striped version and I'm working, I'm gonna have to, this thing is huge. It's absolutely monstrous. This um, is my first, um, you can't even look at, look at how long this is. It's gotta be like yeah. two meters. I think there's 260 stitches in it's the cast on. Like it's gonna be like a shanklet, isn't it? Like a blanket shawl. Yes, yeah. definitely. Um, so this yarn is um, Valley Yarns, the, um, is it a range? And it's called Huntington Splash in the colorway Black Sea. Um, I bought this yarn from a yarn company called Webs, which is um, based in the United States in Massachusetts, where I'm originally from. My um, mom took me to Webs um, the last time I was in the US and we, um, I think we bought out the store, basically. I came back with um, what was effectively an entire suitcase full of yarn. <laughs> um, so I chose to do, to do the stripes in this colorway because I could pick up um, the other colors for the other sections. So there's, if you hold that for me, there's multiple, I think six, colors. So my ne the next one I'm going to add on top of this color is, um, sorry, I forgot the name of this one. The color is Awara. And this is from an indie dyer in Melbourne, one of our locals, um, called Half Baked Hand Dyed. So this will pick up the purple. And then um, I've also gone to another one of our local shops called Morris and Sons and they do their own line of yarn. So I've got a few colors um, for of their yarn. Now I thought for the third color, I'm gonna do this one, Daffodil. So I think that will be so bright and happy. Um, I think that's gonna be Lots of dopamine. gorgeous. Lots of dopamine. And then for the other striped bits, um, I've got, here, sorry, I can't remember this one, Deep Scarlet, which is this um, kind of an orangey burnt red. And it's actually a perfect match for the, the color in the original. Mm, mm. This gray color called Smoke, um, and then this lilac colored, um, which is called Smoked Orchid. Um, I was thinking about changing out one of the colors, and I suppose this is a good thing about knitting, because as this is knit up, you can kind of see a green as well with the, you see it at the ends of the yellow yeah. sections? And I do tend to wear quite a bit of olive green. I love that color. So um, if you have any ideas about which color I should swap out for the olive green, maybe put it in the chat and help me out because sometimes I have a really hard time working with color. Um, and for that reason, well, let me pause there. Drink pairing with this. It's pretty simple. Um, back and forth with a wrap and turn. And once you get the wrap and turn down, um, that's probably the most complicated part. Just like Amy Palco at the end, the other edge, I've done a slip one with yarn in front to make a smoother um, you avoid the garter bumps on the side. It may, just makes a smoother edge. Um, but I reckon like a nice April spritz Ooh. for this one. Yeah. So you can, um, it's long, like it's long rows, but um, yeah, not too challenging. Not too challenging. Yeah. Um, but speaking of challenging, <laughs> my next whip is probably the most complicated um, project I have ever tackled and that's I think that's saying something because we've done shawlography we don't we don't shy away yeah from complicated um so I think it was around this time last year um I learned about the and I can't 
I don't know if it's actually, I think it's Stephen and Penelope, mm. uh, the yarn shop in Amsterdam that many, um, if you're experienced knitter, you will likely have heard of Stephen West, who is, as I understand it, some co-owner of Stephen and Penelope, which looks like an incredibly gorgeous yarn shop in Amsterdam. And Stephen West is a bit of a rock star in the knitting world. So mm. if you're not familiar with him, look him up. Um, he is a fabulously vibrant personality, um, really warm and welcoming in his videos. He mm. does lots of excellent instructional videos, although sadly not for this project. <laughs> um, and uh, has a, has a I mean, have a have a look at his Instagram page. You'll, mm. you'll get the vibe. Um, so there's some great little videos in there too. So definitely, yeah. definitely, he does a little bit of a um, blog slash vlog as well that I would recommend. Um, I would recommend that too. Um, so their yarn shop does um, what they call a yarn along. So I um, I signed up for the yarn along. Then I got my mom to sign up for the yarn along so that we could have more projects to knit together. More on that at another episode. And then I told Nicole <laughs> that I had signed up for the yarn along. And I think it probably took about 30 minutes for Nicole's FOMO um, <laughs> to <laughs> send her <laughs> rushing to the internet um, to get the yarn along. So we all have the yarn along. Um, and what the yarn along is, is exclusive colorways um, and patterns that come out at the first half of the year. Um, and you have, um, so the yarn and an accompanying shawl pattern. And so one each, one package and, and then the pattern is released um, each month for three months. And they're all, this year they were all shawls. I can't remember the name of the first one. Um, uh, the striped one. Yeah. Um, something parallel. Vortex. Vortex. I think it was yeah. a vortex. We didn't, didn't get behind the first one. I'm not sure what it was about. It has such a really interesting construction, that one, like from starting with the center yeah. and then working out into kind of a square or a rectangular shape. The yarn's um, gorgeous, though. The yarn and, was and beautiful. I have used it to do another project, which is a gift so I cannot show it here yet. Uh, <laughs> the next one we both loved. Love it, can't wait to make it. And it's released as a it pattern was. now. So Just this week. Yeah, trickling. <laughs> trickling triangles. Um, I love a good alliterative name. You can say it now too. Trickling triangles. Yes. <laughs> um, which is gorgeous. Um, and I even love a yellow. I'm not I mean, I've got yellow in my striped, but it's not something that I wear that frequently. I'm a big yellow wearer in contrast. But yeah, um, so that's great. That's a really lovely one. We, it, it fell though both in the middle of some serious whips for us, I think. Definitely. So we haven't cast that one on yet. I know, I don't know why. But this one, number three. Oh my God. When that came out, I just, I had to knit it right away. I probably had like eight whips and I was like, no, nah, one more, one more. It's, and here it Fabulous. is. Fabulous. I have, I have also cast this on, but then haven't progressed nearly as much. Um, here it is. How gorgeous is this? I know it's as well huge, um, but here we go. This is the first section, these stripes. And they're a little, it's not blocked yet, obviously, but um, they're quite open. Then these crisscross sections. And then there's this tuck stitch section. Um, uh, this is what they called a centipede stitch. And then another crisscross section. And now I'm working on this section, which is called the arrows. And that has been, um, it's very challenging. And one of the reasons that it's challenging is that it's already up to, um, I think I'm at about 540 stitches in the row. Um, so um, 
each row takes me about an hour. So I have committed to doing one row a day just to try and get through because there's, I think, 21 arrow rows. So even like if you think about the investment of time um, to make this shawl, which I cannot wait, but like literally, it's going to be worth about five thousand dollars. <laughs> Seriously, <laughs> time it's I cannot, I cannot leave this on the tram. Oh gosh, no! <laughs> I feel like we should just stand up and stretch it out All because right. otherwise you won't really get the enormity. Um, oh. Except and look we can't at how, stretch it out too no, much. No, because either. look at how bunched up it is. And yeah. this is like a 120 centimeter cord. <laughs> so, but it's just. It's gorgeous. It's so It's beautiful. unbelievable. Now, um, the yarn. So the pattern's not available yet on Ravelry, but I think it will be. And I reckon because Stephen and Penelope have offered kits in the original colorways that they, mm. um, well, for the other two they have. Um, that they will do so for um, this one. So two of the colors are like in the long grass, which I have become a massive, massive fan of since. And you, they're, it's, I, it's gone just beautiful. Down. Yeah, it's gorgeous. I'm so it's from Ireland. Um, this is the Merino Singles, 100%. Um, I'm thinking that's Superwash Merino. Nicole's holding the color um, Pollinate. And then this is the lighter color called parchment. So similar, I think parchment is a kind of a washed out version of pollinate, but um, I mean, just the blues, the greens, a little bit of red and orange through that. Um, and then the pollinate is this cream with some flecks of brown and pink. Um, the other two colors, and I can't, want to remember the dye. This is, sorry, I'm just, Essence of Autumn is the dyer Great name. And I can't even, this is literally probably the, my favorite color that I have ever knit with. Um, that's called- So vibrant. <laughs> it's called Firecracker and it just- it, It's exactly like a firecracker. It is, it's got these like incredible blues and it's just ever changing. So blues, pinks, um, yellows, and sometimes white. Um, sometimes it goes to no color. Oh, um, this one's actually Zephyr. I think that one's Firecracker. Is it? I thought this mm. was Red Hot. I think I've got them. Have we got them mixed around? Oh, maybe it is Zephyr. Oh no, Color Firecracker. Firecracker. I don't know what I'm Maybe talking Zephyr about. is the base. Zephyr might be the base. Yeah. Oh, oh, sorry. I hadn't even, I actually had no idea what the composition of this was, but now it makes sense because this is probably also the softest yarn that I have ever worked with. It's 75% merino, 15% cashmere, um, and 10% silk. It's so beautiful. It's it's so beautiful. Yes, and this is red hot, which is 100% red hot. This is the brightest of reds, orange, yellows, pinks. Um, and after the arrow section, you actually do the tuck stitch section with both of these colors. I and mean, this is gonna be a riot of color. <laughs> And then the I-cord bind off, which will be over 600 stitches by then. So it will probably take me about a week. Um, but the I-cord bind off is done in Firecracker. So much fun. Um, and this drink pairing, for the, it's called the Mat Matanoa shawl. I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. And I apologize if, um, if that's offensive. Um, or if I've offended anybody by my pronunciation, because I think it's um, I think it's an indigenous yeah, word. Yeah, it, it, it's something. To, Malia um, was the so uh, she's the other partner of Stephen and Penelope, and it had a link back to her um, family. I think yes, where the name came from. Um, so the drink pairing, the drink pairing for this is definitely water. <laughs> Just stay hydrated. 100%. <laughs> You're going to be knitting 500 stitches in a row. Like, yeah. stay hydrated, stay alert. Maybe keep it fun, get some fizzy water. Oh, yes. Fizzy water. Add a lemon. Add a lemon slice. Oh. Get some zing. Wild. <laughs> so those are my two whips. So what are you making? I am working on 
the Summer Sorrel, which is a beautiful t-shirt pattern by Wool and Pine. And I absolutely adore their projects. They do oh, absolutely pine. stunning, um, colourful pieces. Uh, this is probably one of the simpler designs from them. Um, there's some really mm. fabulous stash buster projects. Oh. What's the one that we love? The sea glass. Oh, the sea glass sweater. And it's uh, basically you change colours almost every round on it. I haven't worked my uh, way up to my, my confidence. I was just one. thinking Although that. It, it is actually described as quite a simple project. In terms of the actual knitting, it's just the uh, confidence with, I think, putting the colours together. They do I, have some good guides. I've gone so far as to buy that pattern. Yep. And... I think you cut the yarn each round. Yeah. And I'm a little bit intimidated by that. So, yeah. Um, Cause one of the things that I think is fantastic about knitting is the ability to kind of rip it out if you don't like it. So mm. I wonder if I can figure out a way to join the colors. Um, I'll work on that. Brave. Anyway, I'll work on that and report Gorgeous, back. gorgeous. Anyway, yeah. so this is the Summer Sorrel, which will be a t-shirt. Um, so we are heading, apparently, heading into summer here in Melbourne. We did have a 35 degree day last week. We did. But it was fleeting. Um, today we are both in t-shirts because mm -hmm, uh, probably... it's a little bit warmer. It's probably a little bit too warm to wear our mostly winter knits today. But um, we also have the aircon on. So anyway, this will be a lovely t-shirt. It's got these gorgeous um detailed rows that will be around the neckline and then it just goes into a lovely simple um garter stitch you actually turn it inside out when you get to that so you can just knit as usual oh. and you don't have to do all the purling so um that's really so it's a really fun um, little project, not too challenging. You do these really fun little dips into the rows below. Uh, they have some excellent instructional videos um, when you buy the pattern with a link. I have an instructional it, video. I find that very, very handy when those videos are embedded into the pattern. You mm. just tap on it, yep. takes you right to it. Yep. Easy. Yep absolutely delightful and the yarn that i'm using was a very inspired gift from my partner who went to singapore on a holiday um and knew that the most appropriate gift uh for a, a solo holiday which does require a, a pretty solid gift if you get to go on a solo mm. holiday on a on a solo holiday uh was to go to a beautiful yarn store in singapore um I started following them on Instagram and their feed is fabulous. Oh yes, the, the yarn, yeah, the yarn. Mm -hmm. um, so this is Kaiju Fibers, which is a Singaporean um, indie dyer brand. And they do summer yarns for warm climates, which is exactly what we need here in Australia and really um, perfect for this, for this summer t-shirt project. So the range that he bought me is called um, Bambino Silk. And it's 65% superwash merino, 20% bamboo. I really love wearing bamboo fibers. I've got a few bamboo blends um, and 15% silk. Uh, and he bought three different colorways. So the pattern actually includes instructions for doing a fade. So mm. can you he, do it as one? You absolutely color? can do it as a single color. Um, but it does, if you wish to do a fade, it, um, even steps you through the best way to do the fade oh. and where to cut in the different colors so that it just um, has a flattering profile for you as well. So uh, the first color that I've started with is this gorgeous uh, spring butterfly color, which is all like um, pale pinks and blues. It would actually be really lovely for um, a, little, a little kid as well, um, mm. or even uh, a baby blanket if you um, wanted to cover all the kind of it's almost it's almost baby blue and baby pink and um, yeah you know gender indiscriminate so a bit of everything um, it has paler um, silvery kind of colors in it as well which brings me to the next yarn so 
Um, there is actually this slight silvery colour. This is the colourway silver. Um, so I'm on, I'm just starting the fade on that. You can't really see it on my sample yet, but um, this will be the next colour, which is this like lovely pale silvery colour, still with just a really mottled, slight mottled effect to the yarn. And then moving in down the bottom to this deeper uh, denim. Mm. And it's gorgeous, soft um, yarn to work with. It's, it's just been an absolute delight. So better get cracking and hopefully I'll have um, maybe, maybe a finished, a finished project to show you for our next video. Maybe. Hopefully I'll have it for this summer at least. I love, love the variegation of the solid um the solids mm. so i hope you can see the color doesn't it's not a solid i mean it is solid but throughout um and i think it's probably the bamboo and the silk and how they absorb the dye differently than mm. the wool that just creates this um it's not really a heathered look um because there's not other colors blended in but it's just goes it's it's stunning and I think that will show up clearer as it's knit up as well so um we'll include some photos on our Instagram mm. I love the um inclusion of bamboo as well which is a more sustainable mm. um, fiber love that about um about our knitting projects when we can incorporate um those kind of more environmentally tender I might say fibers yeah I have a finish off to show you today this is so special <laughs> so um, we haven't known each other for all that long we are part of a little community group and uh, at that stage when I joined in January um, there were meetings being held online because of there was um, quite high COVID numbers in Australia at that time. Mm -hmm. And in this first um, meeting, Gayanne was busy knitting and um, showed her project to the group when prompted. And I had just finished the same shawl. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. really we were meant to be. I reckon we're coming close to our one year friend anniversary. Yeah, and it's one of those friendships where I actually already feel like we've known each other for about 10 years. Um, for sure, because yeah. we're kind of like the same person in different bodies. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> so, um, let's talk about the MCAL. Yeah. Um, so my first MCAL was the 2021 MCAL. I went from my cardigan to another sweater that we're going to talk about in a, another episode. And then I broke my foot in the middle of lockdown. Mm -hmm. So I couldn't even go outside for my hour walk a day because I wasn't allowed to walk. Um, and then uh, spent a lot of time on social media and saw some advertising or some announcements around uh, the West Knits MCAL. So MCAL stands for Mystery Knit Along. Mm -hmm. And the West Knits MCAL is it's an event. Um, yeah, so it's run by Stephen West that we mentioned earlier um, from Stephen and Penelope. And there is probably a month of hype mm. to get ready for this project. So in a mystery knit, -al knit along, the designer will give you um, suggestions for um, yarn and colors you obviously get the what type of yarn you need and the meterage or yardage um that's required and then um so i think for the first one that we did there were five colors and then for this year you had to pick three colors 200 grams i think it was right of two yeah. of the colors and then 100 grams of um the third color so this year's uh, mystery knit along was called Twists and Turns, um, and it definitely did have some twists and turns. Um, I'll show my finished so exciting. piece. And we're going to include some close-ups and photographs on our Instagram of this as well. 
Um, so this is look at the this. mystery knit along. I feel like we need to do oh, a little. Oh no! Do we need to stand up? Let's stand up. Travel because oh. it's. We might even have to move that. Oh my goodness! <laughs> it's a, it's a long piece. It is so long. It's probably two and a half meters if I had to guess. Mm -hmm. um, and you just have to go through each section. So the this the is section one. Section right? one. And it has these fabulous, which I can't undo for you, but um, fabulous um, plaited pieces that you knit as sort of long cables and then plait them together. Uh, then section two, I think was, was it these bits? It must have been these bits. Yeah, yeah these the... stripes using the... Um, main colour and then an accent colour. They might come a little bit closer. closer. And then this very fun cabled section down the bottom here. And then the next yes. clue was a bit wild because you basically just did this long uh, piece there that was like, everyone was calling it a belt. Um, we thought it was going to look a bit like a, a straight jacket for a while. I'm going to give just some perspective, right? So that's like a human arm. <laughs> right. it's, a, it's a big piece of work. Um, and then you fill in this at the last section. There was an option to make, so this is this little part down the bottom is part of the last clue as well. There is an option to make it longer and a bit more um, zigzagged at the bottom, but I uh, went with a a slightly um, simpler, shorter uh, cast off. Um, but it was an immensely fun project to make. So um, I started off when the MCAL was announced, I decided to do a bit of a stash dive because I was very fortunate to go on a wine riding trip to France earlier this year. And while I was in France, I did buy a lot of, well, some French yarn, um, but I found this gorgeous um, lichen. So this is Life in the Long Grass, um, which is the same yeah. indie dyer that we talked about earlier with the Mortenoa. Um, so I found this gorgeous uh, color, which was a, a green with lots of different colors in it uh, at a beautiful yarn store in Paris and decided that that had to be in my shawl. That was mm -hmm. non-negotiable. So then we went on a lovely day-long <laughs> shopping trip. That was fabulous. Gay Anne curated. We planned, um, we went to a number of our local yarn shops, including um, Little Woolly Makes. We went to Lumen Spindle, uh, Wandoflex, and Sunspun Yarns, all in one day. <laughs> um, <laughs> That was pretty epic. And found, well, lots of things that we wanted and, yeah. and um, some glorious yarn. But I ended up getting my yarn from uh, Little Woolly Makes, who we will hopefully talk to at some point in the future mm. um, for this vlog. Mm, we love and you. We love you, Little Woolly Makes. <laughs> and um, ended up finding, I didn't, I'd never seen it here in Australia, but Life in the Long Glass life in the long grass here at um in you know, not very far from where we live about an hour's drive so uh these are all life in the long grass yarns um the lichen so the green and the lovely kind of burgundy maroon color are um, from the moon range which is 80 percent merino and 20 percent silk and it's a twist yarn um, the maroony, I, I like to call it burgundy because it's a wine name, mm. but um, it's called Baroque, um, so they have lovely names as well. Mm. And then I found this, um, I really wanted a, a dusky rosy pink colour, so I found this lovely um, dusky rosy pink, uh, the colour of this one is antique, so again life in the long grass, but this is their twist sock, which is a uh, merino with a little bit of nylon blended in um, and again it's a yeah lovely twist yarn it's gorgeous stitch definition as well mm. um, with those plaid yarns yeah, definitely really beautiful 
And then um, to reference back to our lovely Amy Pamko again, uh, she did a little mohair dare with this fun twists and turns section. So uh, you can sort of see in the light there, um, it's like a little winding road that you knit. And uh, she added a strand of fine silk, uh, lace mohair to, to this section. And so I borrowed the idea and I had this beautiful 70% um, merino, 30% uh, soie, which is the French word for silk, in uh, Le Petit Point Parisien. Uh, I apologize for my French pronunciation, it's not no, brilliant. I think that was fantastic. Um, <laughs> but it's um, a colorway called Macaron, and I, um, it was quite a, I didn't bring it with me today, but it's quite a pale, um, a pale mohair yarn that has just occasional little flecks of gold and and this similar sort of burgundy colour in there. So uh, it, I'll include some photos and close-ups of this on Instagram, but you can sort of see this um, lovely, slight variegation in this section. Mm. Um, so much fun. It's so much fun. It's to just knit. exquisite and um, so much knitting. This is a big, big project. So anybody who had finished the, sorry, there's a series of clues that come out one each week. Um, and really salute anybody who actually got through that knitting in one week. You are amazing um, and a very fast knitter. So please um, comment in our, in the comment below about how you get so fast because I feel like maybe next year I'll just take the whole month off. Oh, wouldn't that be delightful? That would be. <laughs> um, yeah, so we'll include some photos of that on our Instagram and some how, nice close-ups um, of it. How will you wear that? How are you going to wear that? I have. I'm um, look. I, 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 I'm not much of a planner when I dress. I will wear it with everything. Can I really? Can I try and style it? On you? <laughs> sure. Will you wear it in the front like that? Oh, and look, maybe. Throw that around and bring this over here. This is how I like to wear my shawls. Oh, look and at that. Like... Ta da! We'll take some photos. Mm. Oh, that's cute. It almost looks like a little top. You could actually. It actually looks it. a bit like a corset. <laughs> oh, with the ribbing. With the ribbing. <laughs> right? But. Much less constricting. Mm. Mm. Oh, that's fabulous. Um, so, what would I pair it with? Oh, gosh. Mm. I, I think um, I paired it with quite a bit of tea. Um, uh, certainly on the stripy sections, uh, I probably delved into the odd glass of wine there, but most of it uh, was just lots and lots of peppermint tea. Oh, I was thinking about coffee. So you could actually <laughs> stay up later knitting or a sugary soft drink to give you oh. some energy. Sleep is so comfortable. Lemon, lime, and bitters. <laughs> um, Very fun project. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so I also embarked on the MCAL journey, but my MCAL journey is not yet done. Um, well, I think we're going to do an entire episode maybe or at least an entire segment of an episode on um, yarn selection and substitution and how we want to pair um, patterns with yarn when we are making those um, or putting those combinations together. Particularly because often here in Australia a lot of the brands that are um, there's a lot of beautiful overseas designers um, that we don't necessarily have easy access to those yarns mm -hmm, here. Mm -hmm. um, or if we do have access, they're incredibly expensive. Um, to I mean, ship. Like, or to and, ship and or to buy. Or to purchase. Yeah, yeah um, absolutely. And as well, uh, I guess we have so much, we have such a strong yarn or such a strong um, sheep and wool industry here in Australia. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, that it is lovely to support our local industry, but yeah. um, it does often mean that we are making things with yarn other than what is suggested in the pattern, which 
um, has varying results. <laughs> has varying results. And here is a, a slightly yeah. varied result. Um, so I'm a ma I'm football mad. Um, so for those of you who don't know, the game of Australian rules football um, is basically an eight month commitment of games every week um, that we watch, we follow our team. Um, my husband and I are members of the Carlton Football Club. So when um, Google Australian rules football, especially if you're not from Australia, and then you'll probably understand. Um, it's just a game. It's a very, very, very active game. So physical, um, but the athletes, the men and the women who play are just unbelievable um, yeah. athletes. And I wanted to make a scarf that I could wear to football. So here is the emblem for the Carlton Football Club. So it's navy blue and white. They also have um, what they call a clash Guernsey. Um, so the tops that they wear during the games can also include a baby blue um, or gray. So I thought, all right, I'm gonna get some Carlton colors and make my scarf like really wearable. Like I could wear it to the football and it'll be fashionable and supportive of the club. Um, so I thought I would go with navy blue and white and baby blue is my color pop, which was fine, except I also wanted to stash dive and my white yarn um, was an alpaca blend and a really light, light fingering. So it was fine for the first section and lovely. In fact. Um, yeah, I'll show gave you. A, gave a nice slight halo effect. It does have a halo effect, which is, oops, let's fix that around. Uh, that's the back. Um, but there's also a team in the AFL league that has a navy blue and white striped jumper, which I hadn't really thought about. So um, if you're a Geelong supporter and you want to finish my MCAL, <laughs> Send me a <laughs> send me a message. Um, although the light blue doesn't match the Geelong colors at all. Okay. Anyway, so this is how far I got, which and um, it's actually gorgeous, really beautiful. It is a delight. But what I realized when I started on these cables is that they are completely flat, and mm. they don't show. The really beautiful, the really fuzzy, um, lovely, soft. Did um, you say it was alpaca? No. Was it? I think it is alpaca. Anyway, the really lovely, soft, fuzzy, um, white yarn, just. But you can't see the cables yeah. at all. And it also looks very much Geelong. <laughs> so, um, Unfortunately, I'm going to frog this, um, but because I have, it's yarn that I can reuse, although, yeah, it is a bit sad because this is probably at least three weeks of knitting straight every free moment of my life. <laughs> um, but that's the wonderful thing about knitting. And the other fantastic thing is that I got to um, buy some new yarn. We love new yarn. We do love new yarn. We so new yarn. this is the, our segment, um, for yarn acquisitions, which today we'll call it's a good mail day. <laughs> um, because I ordered this yarn online during the big wool show actually. So I did get a bit of a, um, I did get a bit of a discount on it because it's a locally produced yarn and we love to support, um, locally produced or local makers when we can. We should also talk briefly about the Big Wool Show, which is a oh, yeah. um, completely online event mm. that goes over two days, over a whole weekend. It was. And it is an, a, a, a packed 
schedule of interviews with local producers and dyers and makers. Um, I think some of the videos are still available on their channel, oh, yes. um, on their YouTube channel. So do check that out. Um, yeah, it's fabulous. There's also master classes that aren't still available. They're just stuff temporarily, mm, I think. I think but, during um, the weekend. Absolutely fantastic event and a lot of local dyers get behind it in Australia. It's held in a week in November, November. and uh, offer discounts and um, it's, a, mm -hmm. it's an opportunity to, one of the many opportunities we have, we're very lucky to celebrate the local um, wool and yarn industry. Um, so I had to think about um, the colors that I wanted to go with, as well as the wearability. Um, and I selected um, a bit of a woolier wool. Um, so all of the football is mainly outside. I suppose games at Marvel Stadium are inside, but um, in the middle of winter, which in the middle of does winter. get brisk. Yeah, it will get cold it, down to about eight. Oh, we get some colder, cold, cold, some colder days, but mm. um, eight Celsius. So. <laughs> yes. Um, so I've gone with a more subtle color palette. Um, you want to help me hold some of those up? So this is a yarn called Darnie. Um, it's available from Spinning Yarns Weaving Tales, which is actually only about, I don't know, it's less than an hour, hour's drive from here. Oh. But I did have it delivered. Um, it is 100% lamb's wool. It is um, in the oil, so it's not rinsed. So I think it will bloom and become even softer and um, what do you, how do you, you think that the softness? It's still quite soft. Right? Yeah. Anyway. So similar to Holst yarn. Super soft. Right? I think um, it's softer than Holst. It is, it is, it is softer than Holst, but Holst is a... Is it in Denmark? Yes, Danish. Danish brand that, um, I guess saves, um, saves some processing cost by including some spinning oil in mm. there so same, mm. same deal here what you can't see i don't think i'm gonna try this but i'm not sure if it will work maybe with the no. lighter one there is a beautiful slightly tweedy fleck no, in go. these um which i love because the lighter the gray picks up the light blue and the dark blue in the tweed um so i'll have my main color as the navy blue again, but this time we'll do the gray for the contrast color. So the stripes in the, it will be here, gray and dark blue. And then this bit more vibrant blue as the accent, um, the accent color there. And this yarn will 100% have fabulous stitch definition. It's, um, it's a beautiful twist. Yeah. Quite a high twist. Yeah. So I will cast on an MCAL at some point in the future um, and drink coffee. <laughs> <laughs> Just stay up <laughs> and finish it. And I think I have until what? When does the season start? March or April to finish it. You should be able to do that. I reckon. Yeah. Is this your next cast on? Well, I've got a gift knit that I want to make with some very special yarn um, that I'll show you. This is a yarn that you can't actually buy um, in the stores. It's, um, we kind of call it calling wool. Mm. Um, and I'm gonna make a pattern called the Highland Slipover by Ozetta, which is a pattern that's available on Rattle Ravelry for a friend um, who has had a really difficult time this year um, and the farm where this yarn comes from my friend has a very special connection um, to that farm um, she's had some health challenges this year some personal challenges this year and I think she really deserves um, to have the care um, of a beautiful 
garment and knit mm. yeah and really like, knit with love yeah yeah so I think I think that will be my next cast on um, I think gift knitting is really special because you can show that love mm. um, but it does take a lot of time to knit um, knit a garment which so is extra special it is extra special extra special because time is really the only well I was about to say the only finite resource I suppose there's a few other finite resources I we mean, might have in but our, in our privileged lives yes yeah. it's the only finite yeah. resource yeah 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 I think we might be nearing the end of our very first full-length episode of pearl thick pairings I'm so excited I think we are gonna pearl pearl pair <laughs> <laughs> this kind of sounds like I already have paired um, this episode with a glass of sparkling to celebrate I think um, we might need to do that I reckon <laughs> so um, we would love it if you in have enjoyed this program um, if you would subscribe to our channel and like um, hit the like button the little thumbs up button um, down below we will have all the details of everything we talked about today um, on the show notes, um, including links so that you can go through the, any of the projects that you might be interested in doing or um, the beautiful yarn that we've shown today. Uh, we will also be including photographs of the different projects that we've talked about, certainly the finished ones, um, on our Instagram, which is at perfect pairings and in the comments section we would love to know what your burning questions are about Australia or the Australian fiber industry because we want to bring programming that is interesting to you um, and we are so lucky here I think so I said it at the beginning to have such a massive particularly wool industry um, we've got I think maybe the second highest number of sheep does New Zealand beat us? Oh, possibly. Anyway, I reckon we'll. Look we've that got up. a lot of sheep. We've got um, a lot of sheep here, and, and, and yeah. lots of beautiful um, single herd. In Victoria, here we're particularly lucky. There's lots of beautiful single herd um, sheep uh, producers. Farms. Yeah. Mm. And we cannot wait actually to take you around um, regional Victoria, which is our plan to show you um, some of those producers because Melbourne, while it's a city, um, it's not that far to get out to the country um, and access um, some of these some of these farms and um, we're really looking forward to that. So if there's anything in particular that you want to see, please let us know and we'll try and include it in, an, in um, an upcoming episode. And also we've been doing, well, mostly Gayanne has been doing um, some micro episodes each day, which is the Black Elephant uh, Yarn Advent Reveal. Um, I get excited every morning when she says, when she sends me a message to say that she's uploaded the video um, where she's revealing the advent yarn each day. Mm -hmm. So um, yeah, make sure that you check those out as well. Yeah, and I'm, I'm knitting my little fingers off as well because I'm, there's a shawl pattern that matches the advent and I'm trying to keep up with um, knitting those sections each day too. So some days are easier than others, um, but I think that's um, probably the same for everybody trying to carve out <laughs> This mindful time for knitting and that this craft that um, you know kind of sustains us and keeps mm. our um, keeps our cup cups full, our cups of tea <laughs> or whiskey or wine. <laughs> Although you might not want a full cup of <laughs> whiskey. Yeah. <laughs> <You're> so <laughs> <laughs> let's end this. Thank you so much for joining us today. We really appreciate your support um, and we look forward to bringing you a lot more um, beautiful uh, yarny goodness goodness 
So have a lovely day, everyone. Thanks for watching. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.